The Lord is thy shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh I like down in a green pasture. Him led I beside still water them. Him restored I soul. Him led I in the path of I justness for him name's sake. Yea! Though I rest, I go walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I can't fear no evil. For thy rod and thy staff them comforted I and I. Uno prepared a table before I. In the presence of our enemy them, Uno anointed I head with no oil. Me cup run it over. Shale, goodness and mercy. I go follow I all the days of I Ivan. Me I go dwell in the house of the Lord God. Ja, kadama we gruma bea te la e higzag beer tana istalina bashante shante 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 kadama we gruma bea te la e where two is and three smitten at the name of the most I ja a de so ja ja de if ja ja never build up your house the biller I go build it in vain same way if ja ja never watch upon your house the watch man I go watch it in vain the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and them is safe many are the afflictions so the righteous but Jah shall deliver him from all of them and I give thanks our mouse of Bolisa Adan Wato a was equally a four. Oh how good and how pleasant it is for Jaja people to live together in peace, love and unity. It's like a precious ointment coming upon the head, all the way down to the beard. Upon the head and beard of ear and go down to his garments. The Lord God Jah loveth everybody and give I and I a gift of life. I and I give thanks. And I give thanks. How my house of I don't know what to It was sick player for. This is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushunam, where we speak truth to power. And my name, Black Rastana. In every African home, there is a Black Pot. And each time this Black Pot sits on the fire, there is something super sumptuous cooking. Ingredients of so many different types, shapes, and sizes, aromas, and flavors. Abandon all these differences into a small background, small corner, and relocate into the black pot where they are subjected to some amount of heating. They produce food in the aftermath. Ironically, they do not even partake in the eating of the food, the black pot and the ingredients. It is us, the eaters, who do. Yet every time, the black pot and the ingredients will rise to the occasion, producing food that they do not eat. What lesson can we derive from this? It's a lesson of selflessness. It's a lesson of sacrifice. Yes, a big lesson of generational thinking. My brother, my sister, how many of us will still go ahead to invest in trees when we know that we will die within one month? Most of us will invest in pepper and tomato so we can eat the pepper and the tomato before we die. My brother, my sister, Remember, we are making children. Remember, our children would also make children. What plans do we have for them? That is generational thinking. 
Yes, we have it all. But we don't have to eat it all. We have to eat and leave some for those on the way coming. Generational thinking. This is the show that does generational thinking. It is called the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushonomo, where we speak truth to power. Here we don't criticize. But if we must criticize, we'll just criticize to build and not to destroy. That is why we say we are in the service of God and country. Oh, yes, God and country. And we are proud to be serving the people. Now, this is the voice of the people, and it's the voice of God. It is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushonomo. And here we speak truth to power. Now, today we have a number of issues to look at. In the interim, remember we are live on YouTube. And our YouTube channel is Black Empire Media. B-L-A-K-K Empire Media. Please remember to subscribe to that channel and hit on the notification button so that each time we are on, you'll be the very first person to see us. It is the Blackport, a.k.a. Koko Shonemo. And here we speak truth to power. Come follow me. We have five issues to look at today. Number one, it looks like we're going to the Oxford Street, specifically to number one, Oxford Street. Watch this. Did Cheddar borrow to build one Oxford Street? Now, one of the landmark achievements of Nana Kwame Bediakon, a.k.a. Jacob Caesar Freedom, or Freedom Jacob Caesar, my brother, my sister, a.k.a. Chada, is the mighty building on the Spintex Road. I beg your pardon, on the Oxford Street, and it's called Number One Oxford Street. It's a very picturesque building. In fact, that building is even in our video, the My Dear Ghana video, is one of the biggest landmarks we have on the street and even the whole of Ghana. In the night, it glows with some beautiful lights. Look at that wonderful building. In the night, this is what it looks like. Isn't it beautiful? Picturesque. Now, for a man to spend so much money to build this, I have so much respect for that man. And it's not about the fact that the man built it, but where he built it, where in Ghana. This is a guy who went to school at Accra Academy. In fact, he went to school in England as well. He could have decided to invest anywhere in the world. But he decided to bring his investment to Ghana. I respect a man like that. My brother, according to him, he made his very first one million British pounds in England. He bought his very first car at the age of 16. His father was a successful businessman. And he gave him some money. He gave the family some money, in fact, to do some business. And he became successful from the business that he did. At least that is what we know from Wikipedia and some other such sources. He bought his very first car at the age of 16. He made his very first one million British pounds in England. And he decided to bring all the money to this country and invest. That is the man we are looking at. He's 44 years old. And his name is Freedom Jacob Caesar, a.k.a. Nana Kwame Bediakun, a.k.a. Shada. But Shada is leading us more into his investments. Did he borrow to build number one, Oxford Street? Run it, my youth. Watch this. And this one is coming from Ghana Web. He says, I borrowed from the World Bank to finance number one. Oxford Street Hotel. And this is Cheddar speaking. Ronit Mayot. Nana Kwame Bediako, popularly known as Cheddar, has disclosed that uh, he once took a loan from the World Bank to finance uh, the construction of his number one Osu Oxford Street Hotel. Speaking in an interview on Joy News on January 12, 2024, he opened up about the financial challenges and the ultimate triumph of paying off the loan that had initially been instrumental in realizing the 14-story building boasting of 104 rooms right there inside the hotel. Chada explained that he, along with a business partner, secured the loan to fund the project located at Osu, a suburb of Accra. I think that Ghana wants to know 
how are you funding all of this? When you build, they say, how are you building all of this? People are not even asking, do you owe some banks? If so, how do you sleep? I used to owe the World Bank. They were the first people I decided to borrow from when we were building the number one Oxford hotel. My partner and I were just wanted that badge. In fact, my partner and I, we just wanted that badge. You know myself and my partner, and we have managed to pay it off because we realized that we were becoming slaves to the loan. It is a tough thing, and now I am quite that free, he said. Meanwhile, a report filed by the independent Ghana.com has detailed that the construction of number one Oxford Street Hotel was partly financed by the International Finance Corporation IFC, a wing of the World Bank Group. The IFC is known for supporting private enterprises operating in developing countries and two companies, Cola Group and Wanda World Estate, which is linked to Cheddar, are said to have secured the investment for the project. So it's clear. Cheddar got a loan to put up this hefty thing. Now the most important thing is not about the loan. It is actually about where this investment is happening. Who is the other partner? Is it Ghanaian? Is he African? Is he Lebanese? Is he Indian? Does it matter? Does it not matter? In fact, when you are telling the story, you tell the whole story. Or don't tell it at all. My brother and my sister, we have seen a number of such investments fronted by foreigners. But Ghanaian faces lead the whole thing. At the end of the day, 99% of everything that comes out of it goes to the foreigners. And the Ghanaians are so happy to take 1%. I'm not saying that that is the case with Chada. But it could also be. Nothing is impossible. Until I read this, I never knew individuals could go to the World Bank straight away and borrow money. I thought it was only nations that did that. But going into this story, I've realized that there's another wing of the World Bank, the so-called IFC, that provides funds for such investments. Come here. I cannot hide my excitement at the fact that this investment is right here in Ghana. And that Chada is doing everything possible to see the investment grow. Again, I am also excited that Ghanaians are demanding to know what is the source of your income? We are tired of drug barons. We are tired of thieves. We are tired of the Akablemazes. We are so tired of all those thieves who all of a sudden appear before us with so much wealth. Meanwhile, a few years back, we knew them as paupers. And they come back and tell us they have it all. Everybody must worship them and that they want to lead the nation. My brother, if we are not careful, drug barons will run this nation. If we are not careful, money launderers will run this nation. After all, in our country, who sponsors all these political parties? Remember he who feeds you, controls you. Now, if we allow just any Tom, Dick or Harry to finance our political parties, they will control these political parties. Imagine that embarrassing video that we saw in Nanaku for Ado's office where a gentleman had gone in there to finance, to help finance the president's bid to be president at the time. My brother, it was so embarrassing. It came out that this was a contractor who at the end of it all, my brother, my sister, will go out there and tell you that, oh, I gave you this amount of money when you were contesting to be president. Can you give me this job? A lot of the jobs are done so shoddily. A lot of those jobs are done in a hurry. 
a lot of those jobs, my brother, my sister, do not inure to the benefit of the country. We have to look at how our political parties are financed. Anybody who wants to pick up a public office, it's not just enough to look at their identities as in which country are they coming from? Are they true Ghanaians? Do they hold a dual citizenship or not? It's not enough. We have to also look at their background. Do they have criminal records? Are they thieves? Have they been thieves before? Have they been locked up in jail before? Why were they locked up in jail? What is the source of their money? Listen, I was speaking with the British High Commissioner at the time. John, and he told me straight away, Black Rasta, if tomorrow I drive a brand new car to the British Parliament as an MP, I will be investigated. I will have to be able to explain how I was able to buy this car. My savings should show how much I withdrew from my account. And if I won a lottery too, I must be able to prove that I won a lottery. But in our country, no. We can fly a private jet tomorrow. Four of their kinds. Nobody would ask us how we, we got that. Because documentation is so poor. How many of us even save? My brother, my sister, is a cash society. Everybody is holding cash. Nobody saves. How many people save? Think about it. All in all, Shada is telling you that he doesn't have it all. Sometimes he has to go and borrow. He borrowed money to be able to build number one Oxford Street. I'm glad he came out so clean. I am so glad that he came out so clean. I remember when Nam Wan came. Many were those who said he had a huge house full of money and gold. And that there was no day Nam Wan would ever be broke. This was the information going around. And we heard it from very credible sources either to today Nam Wan is not as rich as he was a few days back. True? Nam Wan is not as strong financially as he was a few days ago. Am I correct? Where is the money in that huge building? It was a non-existent outfit. There was nothing like that. My brother, if at the time we knew that Nam Wan was also taking loans, if at the time we were told and we got to know that Nam Wan's money was also coming from this source, we would not be surprised that today this would happen. And again, we would have limited our expectations. I'm glad Ghanaians are looking at the source of people's income. I am glad that Ghanaians are beginning to look at the source of the income and put so much importance to it rather than just the income. And I pray that very soon, churches would also start looking at who exactly they make church elders. Not just rich people, but how those rich people became rich should also be quantified and also be looked at. To Chada, I say congratulations, my brother. It's good that you've been able to come out and show the world that this is what you have done. And at least people would minimize their expectations. At least people would know that, yes, you don't have it all. But you manage with whatever you have. But remember this, according to him, has been paid already. And he doesn't like talking about loans because he almost became a slave to a loan. How does he make his money now? Does the hotel make money? I'm going to go into a nice investigation to find out if the, if the hotel is making money, if that investment is being patronized by Ghanaians. But I will encourage Ghanaians to patronize that outfit. In fact, it's a beautiful edifice. Very beautiful. Don't just go to Cheddar asking for sponsorships. Don't go to him asking him to give you A, B, C, D, E, F. No! You must also spend on this. This could have been built in Dubai. And you will fly all the way to Dubai to go and sleep in this hotel and pay money. Now that you have it in Ghana, you should even be paying twice or thrice for it. 
Now that you have this wonderful building in Ghana, you should patronize it. At least go in there and sit down there and, and drink a bottle of water to support the business. You make rich people disrespect us because you are always running after them and begging them for crumbs. I sympathize with rich men in Ghana. And I sympathize with Chada. That is if he is rich or if he considers himself rich. How many people are going to be knocking at his doors asking for crumbs of bread? How many people are going to be running after him looking for sponsorship every now and then and never ready to patronize this huge investment? A lot of Ghanaian investments have collapsed because of our greed and foolishness. We are not ready to patronize our own businesses. But if this was in Dubai, we'd be glad to travel with our girlfriends, go and sleep in there, take photographs and selfies, and tell the whole world that this is where we have spent our holidays. But now that is in Ghana, no. I wouldn't be surprised if out of how many rooms we have in the hotel, not 10 of them are even occupied. And I will not be surprised, even if the rooms are occupied, it's only white people and foreigners. Ghanaians, learn to appreciate. Learn to patronize your own investments. That is how we can grow. Or else, nobody would like to do business here, no matter how patriotic they are. It's the black port, a.k.a. Kukushonema, where we speak truth to power. Come here, my youth. Next story we are looking at, it looks like it's taking us into the world of sports and taking us out of the world of sports into academia, right? Disappointed Kwesi Nyantechi, now a lecturer. You know who Nyantechi is, right? Nyantechi is an interesting personality, you know? He's a combination of uh, sports and academia. I love him. Until he told us that he was Muslim. Many people thought that he was Christian. But whatever it is, it's the same God we are serving, right? I'm just looking at the kind of man this man is. He's married to two wives because he's Muslim. And his religion permits him to do that. This man speaks Wale so fluently. But when you look at him and his name, Kwesi Nyantechi, he doesn't look like a man who speaks a word of any northern language. As it is in Ghana. You know how it is in Ghana. If you are called Kwame Mensa, hardly would you speak Gruni or what they call Fra Fra. If you are called Neodai, it's very difficult to see Neodai speaking Dagbani. And if you see Mumu Nizabarama, it's difficult for him to speak Ghana. And if he tries to even speak Tri, <laughs> you will break your ribs with laughter because of the pronunciations of the words. But this all makes us a great people. Variety, right? When an ever man speaks tree, I know straight away where he's coming from. And when a gar man is speaking English, I know where he's coming from. You understand? Out of this variety, oh, it is so spicy, isn't it? This is beautiful. This is Kwesi Nyantechi, a man of different colors. And I truly admire him. You know why I admire him? At a point, he was the capo of Ghana football. No football was kicked in Ghana without Nyantechi blowing the whistle. He was quite humble. People loved him. And to make it even more interesting, you know what he did? Nyantechi went all the way to the northern region of Ghana and invested there. He had the money. He could have invested in Accra. But no, he didn't. He went to the deprived northern region. The Upper West Region, to be specific, why? And planted a football club there. Raising great talents. And forcing other great talents to move from Accra, Kumasi, and all those big cities to the Northern Region in order to participate in his wonderful football exploits. I respect a man like that. He defied all the odds. Oh, as, as Santi Kotoko, Kumasi... Accra House of Oak, Accra, Real Tamale United, Tamale, Sunyane, and all these places had great football teams, not the Upper West. The Upper West heroes, oh my God. Nyantechi, bam, made it happen. But he fell on bad days. Come here. In fact, his ambition became inordinate. 
when Anas Army Yao Anas's tiger eye lenses located him, he became greedy and was demanding millions of American dollars, boasting on live camera that he had the president in his pocket. If a man like Nyantechi has the president in his pocket, then he's bigger than the president. We should rather be saluting him, not the president, right? The president disowned him immediately. He had to go to the presidency and beg for forgiveness. We expected that Nantechi would apologize to the people of Ghana and tell Ghanaians, yes, it's true. In fact, I fell. But the most important thing is not about where I fell. I've looked at where I've fallen very well and I'm rising again. Support me, Ghana. Forgive me. Look at the positive things that I did in the past and believe that more positive things can come. I will not repeat such mistakes again. Ghanaians, I'm sure, would have chastised him for a few days and then a lot of the God-believing Ghanaians that we are will forgive him and let things go. But he's still busily going around trying to explain. Listen, you go explain Taya if you don't get evidence. But Nyan Techi has proven to us that before he became a football administrator, before he became the capo of Ghanaian football, endorsed by FIFA and CAF, he was an academic. And from now, he's going into the universities to lecture. Hallelujah. And when I heard this, I remembered my days at the University of Central Missouri the University of South Carolina, when I was busily lecturing and many people could not understand. They were like, how? What is he lecturing? Because we don't flaunt our certificates and academic laurels. They think that we are just what they see. My brother, kudos to Nyantechi. Run the story, my youth, and come here. You think so, you day wise. Why, Ex-GFA boss, Kwesi Nyantechi, announces plan to enter academia. Ice lecturer role. And this was published on the 12th of January, 2024. Yes. Run it, my youth. See this. Former Ghana Football Association GFA president, Kwesi Nyantechi, has announced his plans to pursue a career in academia. In an interview with Accra based star FM, Nyantechi revealed that he aspires to become a lecturer and eventually a doctor in academia. Now the former CAF vice president and FIFA executive council member who has been out of football administration since the release of the Anas Armiyao Anas number 12 football expose expressed his enthusiasm for teaching and sharing his knowledge with others. I am aiming to be a lecturer soon. He said, I will be entered into academia. I want to become a doctor in academia and a lecturer. The former GFA boss, who is also a former first vice CAF president, stressed that he is eager to acquire the necessary skills for his new career path. This, that is what I want to do, and I will do that soon. Nyan Techi's achievements in football administration are well documented, having qualified Ghana for three consecutive FIFA World Cups in 2006, 2010, and 2014, and overseeing the Ghana under 20. Uh, team's historic victory in the World Cup. My God. His transition to academia marks a new chapter in his professional life. And he's excited about the prospects of sharing his expertise with students. He's currently serving a 15-year football ban following the controversial documentary by Anas Dash. You see, Nyan Techi, sometimes when life throws lemons at you you don't throw the lemons back and get bitter and angry turn the bitter lemon into lemonade when life confronts you with bricks don't throw the bricks back at life use the bricks as what stepping stones into your destiny maybe your work as a football couple is ended when you force it is disgrace that you'll be confronted with. There are some people 
because of recalcitrance to move on. They stay at one place and all they get is disgrace. There can't people say, Sometimes we hang on for too long at a particular job space. When God's plan for us, and I'm saying God because he's a man who believes in God. When God's plan for us is that I've used you enough here, you have achieved, I'm going to make you a better person. But when you refuse and continue being there, sometimes God would have to force you out by any means necessary. See this as that opportunity. If it is yours, it will come back to you. But first and foremost, confess your sins. Tell God you erred, though God knows it already. Sometimes you have a son who has erred. You want him to be remorseful. You want him to confess that he has erred. It is good to hear it again. Let tears run down his eyes. And let Ghanaians know that you let Ghana down by the utterances you made. Lingering around money laundering and even more. And move on. I'll be glad to sit in your class. Honestly. Just to listen to you. And I know that that PhD that you want to grab, you will grab it. You are a brilliant guy. Look at your head. The head looks like a reservoir of knowledge. And with the interviews that you granted, I can tell that you are not dumb dumb. No, you are smart. Hold it up, brethren. Grab it. When my issue with Parliament came up, and I had to leave radio, I grabbed the academic button and started running with it. I touched the ground running. I went to America to lecture. I didn't lecture in Ghana. I went to America to lecture. Thanks so much to my professor, Professor Albion Mens, a.k.a. Albino Biarantumu. He listened to my lecture on radio and he was always dreaming for me to lecture in America. When the opportunity came, he said, Black Rasta, there's this opportunity. Are you interested in it? I said, oh, yes. Can we get a visa for you? I said, well, I have a visa already. What are you waiting for? Come. And when I went, they didn't even want me to go. Today, I'm glad to say that my lecture in some of those universities marked a very huge monumental structure in the history of those schools. Students still talk about it on Facebook, whites and black, because we made an impact. Maybe that is waiting for you as well. Don't be too hard on yourself. Don't get too sad. Even your wife said, when she saw you talking on video, she couldn't believe that that was her husband speaking. It looked like some spirit had entered you. Sometimes when we are in a hurry to impress or to save, we might fall. Take it as one of those days and stop making an ass your enemy. Move on. And let's see what other lemons are waiting for you so you make lemonade. In the interim, I salute you, academia. Salute Dr. Kwesi Nyantechi, PhD. I salute you. Dash! It's a black pot, a.k.a. Kukushonemo. When we return, hey, more fire. Kai! Woyo!
Lakpot. Kokusho rama. This is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kuku Shono, and here we speak truth to power. Did we see that quote? What a quote. If we knew the amount of greatness in us, we would stop disrespecting ourselves. If we knew the greatness lying in stock for us, we would stop brooding over whatever feet we have lost. This is especially for Kuisi Nyanteche. And all of us. My brother, you know I love you. Next story, my youth. Watch this. Hey. UTV apologizes to Mahama. When I see media houses apologize, I feel quite good. Why? A lot of media houses are so arrogant. Until you threaten them with court action, they never apologize. UTV is one station that normally does that. It publishes a lot of stories, and then sometimes it airs and would have to go out there and apologize. There are some media houses that are so arrogant and so blockheaded. They publish only trash, and they are not ready to say they are trashy. People think I, I talk trash, yet all these years, not even one time have I been sued. Never. Never. Never been sued. We have had threats. I'll sue you. I'll da 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 da. Okay. I'm glad when people sue. It means I've stepped on your toes. You are right to go and seek redress. That is democracy. I won't hate you. But if I realize that I've made a mistake, I will apologize to you and retract it and beg you on top and even take you to dinner. To air is human. Why would you be arrogant to say you have erred when you have actually erred? Run it by youth. Watch this. Mahama never said he would order remarking of 2023 Wasi. UTV issues apology. My God. And this was published by Ghana Web. And as we know by, by now, Ghana Web has been shut down, right? You cannot access Ghana Web right now. Well, they have put out a statement that they are undergoing some system management. But when you look at it, it doesn't look like that. It looks like they have been shut down. I pray that Ghana Web comes out. It will be a disaster if Ghana Web doesn't come back. Because this is a very powerful news portal. And we get a lot of information. They are always up to date. So we pray that Ghana Web returns. Yeah? But who is Mahama? The former president of the Republic of Ghana. That is John Dramani Mahama. John Dramani Mahama bemoaned the bad invigilation that happened in the last examination. And he came back to say, if we continue like this, nobody is going to respect our certificates anywhere in the world. My brother, Edu Watch, another outfit writer in Ghana that deals with education, came out and corroborated what the former president said. We were the first to talk about it on this show. My brother, there was a time when Nigerian school certificates were so disrespected because of mass cheating. Nigeria took a bold step forward and tried to reinvent itself. And it happened. Some of the greatest scholars come from Nigeria today as we speak. There was a time, the only place we could get authenticity for our education was Sierra Leone. When we all went to school in Sierra Leone. Do we all remember? Then it went to Zimbabwe. Ghana was the hub of education. Kwame Nkrumah made it possible. But because of hungry teachers, bad pay for invigilators, and so on and so forth. I just read only yesterday that government has not even paid some invigilators for the last examination. Government has not even paid the examiners. Edu Watch investigated this and it came out that some schools would even ask you to pay bribes. Go and sit at home. Don't attend the school at all. 
they will put your name in the portal and then give you certificates with the best excellent because you pay bribes and when you look at the bribe money is so small it's peanuts well UTV announced that the former president Mahama said if he comes into power he will make sure that the last examination written will be remarked he didn't say it anywhere we didn't hear him say that anywhere and we do not know how UTV got that information? It's crazy. How did UTV get the information? Where is the source? What is the source of your information? At least tell us the source so we say that, oh, this is not a good source. But no source. UTV just created it and put it up. And many portals took that out. At least they had a source. Their source was UTV. But UTV had no source. And UTV is a big network. Finally, they had to apologize. And they apologized. We are glad that the apology happened. But can we look at dealing with our academics better? Now, if your children go to school and you have to go and pay bribe before they get all A's, are you proud of that? Will you be proud to tell your friends that your child is so brilliant? when he does not even know the difference between Togo and Togo? Are you glad? Are you happy? Don't let us shoot ourselves in the foot. Don't let us behave like ostriches. Let us be responsible and be wise. Look, patriotism is what is going to let us stand firm and say, hey, my brother in the house just went to do illegal connection. Police, come get him. How many Ghanaians will do that? Unless you and your brother have been fighting. There are some families where brothers don't agree. They are always fighting. Their wives are fighting each other. That way they can report each other. But when they have a cordial relationship, will they ever report each other to the police? Even if they are doing the most terrible things. But that's what we should be doing. That's what we should be doing. We should be in a hurry to fight injustice. We should be in a hurry to deal with injustice. Any anyway, which way. UTV, thank you so much for apologizing. But next time, make sure that you have a good source before you publish your information. It's a hazard of the job. It's a black pot, a.k.a. Kukushunamo. When we return, we have more. The African Cup of Nations is going on, right? AFCON. Ghana lost to Cape, Cape Verde. Nigeria 1-1. In fact, and Guinea-Bissau scored the first goal before Nigeria came back. Senegal walloped. It's opened by how many goals? Three goals. Other countries are playing. Some are dejected. Some are hopeful that they will return and play better. But... Ghana has won it how many times? Four times. Is Ghana the highest country that has won the AFCON? Which country in Africa has won the most AFCON caps at the final? Do you know? If you know, be my guest. If you don't know, still be my guest. Hey! Wayo!
So this is the team Ghana is playing on Thursday, right? This is the team. Ghana is going to be playing the Pharaohs. They have won the trophy seven times already. They want to win it the eighth time. Ghana wants to get it for the fifth time. It's going to be a clash of the Titans. May the best team win. It's the Blackpot, a.k.a. Kukushonamo. Shall we see your messages? Remember to keep your messages coming in. And at the same time, make sure that you hit on the share button so that your messages can go out there. Yes, share the broadcast. Danny Man says, welcome, Black. And Grace Kumado says, we will see the behind of the hen when the wind blows. Black, you guys are doing a great job for Madagana. Thank you so much, my Grace Kumado. I love you. Rap Thunder says, I am so happy to see you. Legendary Black, Alhamdulillah. It's another blessed week. Woyoy. Danny Mans comes back and he says, I pity my countrymen despite the suffering they are going through. Still, they remain gullible consumers of information. I can't be Ghanaian. Mm. And still refusing to ask critical questions. All right. I said, I can't believe Ghanaians are still refusing to ask critical questions. Yes, we must. Mohamed Banjir 1, a.k.a. MC Scorpion, says, Masha Allah is another blessed week. And we are up and kicking and fully ready and prepared to listen, yes, to truth as we speak truth to power. More love, Mbiele. We are together in spirit. Wayo, signed, MC Scorpion from Ashaima. Francis Ampim says, it's a brand new week to Jabi the glory. And the show is live and is still all about Ghana. Come here. Oh, yo. Benjamin Kwanza says, this is the Blackboard. Come here. Black Rasta, on behalf of the Black Empire family, what advice would you give to Cheddar about his ambition to become president of this country? Well, it's good to have that ambition. We are kingmakers. We make kings. But we will investigate the kings, check their background before we endorse them. I don't want a man who, have no, who has no respect for animals to be president. A lot of Ghanaians don't care. Animals are nothing. You're just supposed to kill them and eat them. That's what we think. Meanwhile, where they are coming from, where Chada comes from, where he went to school, you can't do that to an animal. And again, I would not want a president who talks to his workers anyhow and when people work for him. We hear that sometimes he doesn't want to pay them. He will find a reason for not wanting to pay them. And we have evidence. You understand? All these things, all the rough edges must be ironed out. We must also find out the true source of his money. Because he claims he has worth. He's a true definition. Let's know how much you are worth. So that we can ask questions. How, how did you make the money? We want to know. It's important. Every public holder in Ghana must tell us where their money is coming from. Or else we'll have armed robbers as president. So it's a good thing. And I, I am still very skeptical about a white woman that he brought as the face of a so-called pan-African group. I have a problem with that. So there are more questions. But I won't rule him out. We are still waiting. But he's a very arrogant. He doesn't like you telling him that he's wrong. And to tell him that this is why you are wrong. Very arrogant. Because he knows it all. And you cannot have a good leader who is arrogant. And because we don't fear them, we tell them. How can I fear you? Yeah? <laughs> Even Rollins was killing people all over the place. We didn't fear him. Let alone you who doesn't even know where. <laughs> anyway, I'll leave it here. So, Kwabena Sego says, that's not true. Individuals don't borrow from the World Bank. Mm. Kwabena? <laughs> All right. So, as you saw in the write-up, there is a wing of the World Bank, which is called the IFC. And that one gives money out. Can you authenticate that? In our next edition, it will be more interesting. 
For now, my brother, there is a wing of the World Bank called the IFC. And people can go there and borrow, especially third world countries. We'll bring you more information. Asima Banda one says, come here. You think say so, you day wise. Why Goswe Jata says, Black Rasta, welcome. Live in Kumase. Okay. Come here. Why Wanini boy says, good evening, Black Rasta. Isa Umar Farouk says, good evening, Black. Good evening to you, my brother. Ah, Danny Mays comes back. He says, I also believe Chada has dealings with Mayweather. And kind of... Uh, uh, bleach, gambling, money, money laundering. Well, I don't have evidence about money laundering. But that's your belief. What's your evidence? The Mayweather deal, I was told, did not work out. They were going to do something, but it didn't work out. That's what I heard. Can you give us evidence as to whether it's working? or not working, and evidence on the money laundering. I'm interested in that. Because anybody who comes out to say, I want to lead you, you open your life as a book for us all to read. Right? Rob Wood says, Black, please don't expose your ignorance to your massive audience. The different arms of the World Bank Group lend money to developing uh, countries and private enterprises. Please stop the hate. Oh, my brother. Where is that hatred? I said I didn't know that until this story came out, I didn't know individuals could borrow from the World Bank. I said it. Until, so where is the hatred? I, I, do people listen? Is the mic loud enough for people to hear? Rob Wood, where is the hatred? Did you listen to me? I said until this publication, I didn't know. And I am not scared to say that I didn't know. I didn't know that individuals could walk to the World Bank and borrow money. So when you read the story, it goes on and on and on and on and on. And it says that, yes, there's a wing called the IFC that provides money. And we said it, that it gives this. Where is the hatred? Oh, some of these guys. Anyway, I leave it here. So another man says, individuals cannot borrow from the World Bank. This guy says, don't expose your ignorance. What ignorance? And a lot of these people who say somebody is ignorant, they are only gaslighting. They are more ignorant than even the devil. They know nothing. There was somebody like that in my class in school. Ah, na we na unim. Adewe. Ah, what's sa papa? And when you tell right, ask eh adewe. And to unim. And they are impossible unim. I say, oh, eh adewe adewe kan kan oba teacher oba oba. And to unim. Hey, what bon papa? Oh, David, 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 David. Let the teacher ask, uh, hey, you. <laughs> you see, heaven and hell. Anyway, uh, men's, daddy man says, Rob, the bank of Ghana. Oh, well, somebody's responding the same. Daddy man's brother says, Rob, the bank of Ghana is different from Ghana Commercial Bank. If you state that you borrowed money from Ghana government, you must state that it's through the Ghana Commercial Bank and not Bank of Ghana. Well, Where is the ignorance? Ubiya Makacho say, I never knew until I saw this. Then you say hatred. I think he quickly wrote it in a rush. He didn't know that it was a positive statement that we're making. Anyway, Jennifer Esu Kamani. Wow. Says, where your greatest black? Rasta, I think I'm in love with this wonderful show. Respect the legendary black Rasta. I'm in love with you too, uh, Jennifer. Yes, blessed love, 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 love. Next story, my youth. And keep your comments coming in. And then Rob Wood, where is that hatred? Can you let me know what, where that hatred is? What? I don't hate. Hey, hate is a very strong word. I can dislike you, but I can't hate you. I don't have that energy for that. And when I, do, I dislike people, I tell them I don't like you. What are they going to do to me? We have grown above that level. President Krama, I catch us in Penasem. I don't like this president. Who else can't I tell this? Don't make it look like somebody's pretending and hiding under something. And so, So what you see. Chada plans to import lions. Panthers. So he's bringing home lions and panthers. The other time he brought white tigers. 
and we were told by the man in charge of these white tigers that they detected them and moved their claws. Animal abuse of the highest order. Now look at how fat they have become. Within how many months? What are they feeding these animals with? Are they looking healthy? Look at the brown one, the brown one at the back. It looks so sick and obese. We are animal activists. We won't permit this. When Salah is coming and people are carrying goats and sheep all over, some of the cows, their heads are hanging out of the car and saliva is right. This is foolishness, man. You cannot do that. That's animal abuse. Even the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad says, you should never be cruel to animals. La tu sir haiwan. La tu sir haiwan. Don't ever be cruel to animals. My brother, you bring animals from their abode where they enjoy life. They are kings of the whole jungle. You come and lock them in such a stinking small cage and feed them with what you want and not what they want to eat. If you were locked in this cage, can you survive in this cage for two days? If people were feeding you with what they wanted. This is what some Ghanaians don't want to understand. And some people will say hate. What is hate? What is hate? Look at these animals. Show that the smaller animals at the time that they came into the country. This was what they looked like. They looked like small cats. A few months down the line. Look at what they have become. Obeyed. Look at the other animal, the white one. Look at the eyes. He's telling you a story. He's saying, he say, oh, why? Why, mother? Can't you see? This animal here, my brother, is depressed. That one at the back is not only depressed, it's obeyed. And when neighbors say, these animals are making noise, these animals, look, listen, people don't know. And it's sad. If you eat an animal that is depressed, you die. The cholesterol level rises. That is why Muslims say, when you are slaughtering an animal, don't show it the knife. Make it sure it's sharp. And give it water to drink first. How many of you are Muslims here? The prophet of Islam says, give it water to drink. You know what it does? The water is supposed to cool the throat and to deceive the animal. That you love it. That's why you are giving it water. Before it realizes. Pa! And the hadith says. Aim at the jugular vein. You know the jugular vein. When the lion is catching the uh, 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 zebra. It goes there straight. Jugular vein. Ka! And bites it. Strangulates you and you are gone. You bring these animals. And lock them in such a cage. Feeding them with what you. It's not only cheddar. Every zoo in the world, let me deal with Ghana. It doesn't make sense to have zoos. Please, turn all the zoos into what? Into what? You know what I'm talking about? Forest reserves. And don't allow Galamse in there. Because as for Ghana, a forest reserve is just a name. Before you realize those idiots are in there, Doing galamse. What kind of people are we? It doesn't make sense. This is what we're talking about. Turn all the zoos into forest reserves. Break all the cages and allow the animals to be free. Why do you lock them? Let me tell you a very sad story. In India, there was a very big gorilla that was captured in the forest and put in a, in a cage, in a zoo. And when it came, it was running around the cage. People were throwing bananas at it, running around, running around. People thought it was happy. No. Not knowing it was running around to see where it could easily break and run off. Because it was not used to being in a cage. Imagine a monkey. 
that moves from tree to tree, several hectares all over the jungle. You lock it in a small cage. It jumps once, it hits a meta. Jumps, yeah, it hits a meta. No, you feed it with what it wants. Do you know how many different thousands of berries the monkey eats? You put it in the cage and feed it with only bananas and water. Are you crazy? If they put you in a room, a eh, room, and feed you with Tozafi alone, would you survive? You get koshoko and die. That's what you're doing to the monkeys. It is thousands, tens of thousands of berries. You bring it in there and give it only bananas to eat. And when it's sick, you go ahead and inject it. When they are in the jungle, do they get injected? They don't get injected because they eat berries that keep them happy. So this gorilla that they put in there, moving from place to place trying to break the cage, when it realized that it couldn't break, it just became quiet and was sitting there. It was depressed. They didn't know. They thought the monkey was not jumping anymore, so the monkey had become used to its settings and all that. My brother, when zoologists went there and looked at the monkey, the gorilla, it was weeping, shedding tears. Or soon said Nipa. There was a time a little child entered there and it caught the child. It held the child. As to whether it was going to tear the child apart, they shot it and killed it. My brother, the gorilla you are putting in the cage has a father. The gorilla you are putting in the cage has a mother. They love each other. Maybe it even has children. It's thinking about the children. It has brains. You will catch it and come and lock it. Those tigers that he brought, Jada brought, maybe they were the children of some other tigers. And the fathers are going to be crying. The mother is going to be crying. They themselves are going to be crying. Where is this? Why do you take freedom from animals for your own selfish wants and needs? When we speak about it, some idiot sees somewhere and says, hate. Where's the hate? That is nothing but the truth. When you imprison a human being, he's always in a hurry to leave. Even jail bears, they like their freedom. Now, Cheddar says he's going to bring more lions into the country. And panthers are also coming. <laughs> ha! Now, if you don't know anything about animals at all, you know that the lion is the king of the jungle. Now, when you bring it and lock it up in a cage, it becomes what? King of the cage? Somebody told me the other day, hey, oh, but Africans, we used to play with lions and we used to have them. And you think that's good? You think everything Africans did was okay? Hmm? You catch a lion and bring it and lock it up. In a cage and feed it with whatever you want. Your trainer is telling us the teeth have been removed and that the claws have been removed. When we were doing singaton, singaton, and we told you be careful. A lot of you came to insult us day and night. Today they are doing standaton, sexaton. Somebody has, has gone to stand for eight days. He's standing like a mummy for eight days. If he doesn't do that, Ghana will not be on the map. <laughs> Sometimes you guys, you make I, I feel like I'm several years ahead of the time. Things that we see, a lot of these people don't see that. You want to be president. This is how you are treating animals. Somebody said, Ah, now Abu was where they Ah, I don't think a black rasta crowd, or pe, or pe, sadi, no, or pe, de, de, crowd, do, do. Ah, a come a queen, or be a babe, boy, who see a boy be, now a boy, they didn't know anything. Say, you couldn't have anything, you know, and I'm going to call a funny and I'm. Dash. Next story, my lord. This is the final story. We are done. The hatred. My God. Okay. Are you brothers cursed to Ghana football? Who are the Are you brothers? Did they are you? Mm? And Jordan are you? These boys, they have become the most disliked 
players in the Black Stars in Ghana. That's how Ghanaians are. They will chase these guys away. And when these guys finally go home and retire, then they will start hailing them. Yeah, 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 yeah. The only goal that was scored against Cape Verde yesterday, it was Ayu's cross from the brothers. Bah! And the defender, Alex Jiku, right? Banged it in. They are so vilified. Just like Asamoajan. Because he missed one penalty, we forgot all the goals he scored. There was even a time people were asking for Abedi Pele and Tony Yabua to be removed from the Black Stars. All because they had some differences. Instead of sitting them down and sorting the differences, they wanted to throw the baby with the bathtub. What have these boys done? What have they done? This is the day. He plays football and his head busts. Blood is flowing. He says, bandage it, I'll still play. It's about Ghana. That was what his father was, was, was doing. Killing himself for the nation. You have hired a coach to come and do his work. The coach is not under any pressure. He's not an animal in a zoo that has been caged and forced to take decisions. No. He decides that. This is the best I have. This is the best I have. You sitting at home who doesn't earn, earn a penny from the selection, you are most vociferous. I agree because you are Ghanaian. You want to see a better side. But if you want to see a better side, would you wish that you were the coach because you know better than the coach? That's it. You hired the coach, paid the coach so much money. If anything at all, Ask for the sacking of the coach. Say that the coach is not good. Look at the boys here. They, they, I don't know if he's crying or he's laughing. He's crying, right? I'm sure something terrible happened to Ghana and he was all tears. That passion. Somebody will say, passion doesn't play football, right? That's okay. But please, let's look at these boys with objective lenses. They said, they, 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 they removed the day. And they removed his, his brother. And when Ghana went to play, it was quite empty. Somebody also said, that, oh, if, they have, if it's about experience, there are players who have more experience. Ah, well, that's what makes football nice. But where the dislike is almost becoming like hate, it hurts. It's okay if you dislike the player. But when you hate, hate is the grandfather of dislike. It's deep. It's deep. Do you agree with me? Do you agree with me? Do you agree with me? Now, a very good friend of mine, he's a C, he was a senior of mine at T.R. Madeira Secondary School. His father was the headmaster of T.R. Madeira Secondary School. He was called Mr. Y.K. Ifa. His son, is a doctor, a medical doctor at the Bato Hospital in the Volta region. He's called Dr. Kofi Ifa. This is Kofi Ifa. He's one of the pay trusts we have in this nation. Brother here should be about five years older than me. And if this year I'll be 50, he should be about 55. I love this brother. He has diagnosed why the Black Stars lost yesterday and why the Black Stars will continue to lose if something is not done. He has mentioned one player and that one player, oh my God, is this player. How many people know this player? How many people know this player? At the point, he was the guy. <laughs> Kumasa Sati Kotoko, when he had the ball, the fluidity, the jealousy, the power, my God, he was extremely exceptional. 
But there was a problem. What was the problem? Watch this. He said, the Black Stars of Ghana and the Stephen Oduro phenomenon. That player is called Stephen Oduro. And this is Kofi Ifa. He says, Ghana has become very technical. I am not a certified coach, coach, but I have followed Ghana football for over four decades. In the 1990s and early 2000s, Kumasi Asante Kotoko had a player, Stephen Oduro, great player when he had the ball. He could do wonderful things with the ball and score goals. His weakness, he was a liability when his team didn't have the ball and he had to defend. When you play against teams that are not good enough or do not have the players to punish you when you lose the ball, you can have many Steven Oduros in a team and achieve good results. Do you understand? If they have the ball, they can do magic with the ball. But when you have good teams that do not give you the ball, you become a liability. You become a Steven Odro. Yesterday, Cape Verde outplayed the and they outplayed and beat Ghana at the AFCON in La Côte d'Ivoire. Cape Verde had more possession of the ball than Ghana. I saw the Stephen Oduro situation in the Ghana team. Ghana had players who were and are good when they have the ball, but are liabilities when Ghana did not have the ball. And there were good and long spells of the match when Ghana did not have the ball. Football has advanced. And listen to this. Skill alone is not enough. Waiting for the ball to perform is outmoded. The black stars of Ghana must learn this quickly or perish. Doctor Kofi Ifa. That's a medical doctor. He has diagnosed medically the problem of the black stars. It's called the Stephen Oduro syndrome. It's a, it's a dangerous malitis that can stop the mandula of Langata from operating right from the spinal cord all the way into the zexis membrane. I know you don't understand. I don't understand it myself. The Stephen Oduro syndrome. Wait for the ball and do magic. No, it's outmoded. Go for the ball and do magic too. Right now, everybody must be attacking. Everybody must go for the ball. Don't wait for the ball be before you can shine. That is the Stephen Oduro syndrome. Yem pasi. I hope that the Black Stars will learn from this from a medical doctor. Now, the Ayu brothers are a curse to Ghanaian football. The pilot can start warming the plane back home. Bafana, Bafana have a chance at lifting AFCON. And this, according to the goal uh, site, that's a... Uh, uh, <laughs> Ayu brothers are a case to Ghanaian football, and therefore the plane should, should start sparking. Almost spark his plane, plane, no, to bring Ghana home. Okay, I don't see any hatred in this. I only see a frustrated fan who wants Ghana to do better, but it's not happening. Are you brothers a case of Ghanaian football? As long as you guys still have those, are you brothers, you won't win anything. They are a case to Ghanaian football. Watch the moment they retire. Watch the moment they retire. Ghana will win Afcon. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you thought football was a joke, wait until your team loses. You see people refusing to eat. Some will cry. Some even commit suicide. You know that, right? Get rid of Ayu brothers. I knew Ghana would lose this Cape Verde match. Eh, uh, yes, and that's the beginning. They need to get rid of the Ayu brothers. Two games left for Ghana, and the pilot can start warming the plane back home. Mm -hmm. These are fans who are commenting. But Ghanaians will stop talking if the next match Ayu scores two goals, and then his brother Jordan also scores two goals. Then the noise would have gone down. But I see a lot of enthusiasm in this. But I also see a lot of tribal sentiments in this, honestly. Ghana is a very tribalistic nation. You can have one person from an ethnic group 
scoring all the goals, and yet people would ask for his head just because he doesn't belong to a certain ethnic group. I pray that we purge ourselves of this. And also, the almighty Stephen O'Drew syndrome, we need to deal with it. All right! It's been the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushu Nemo. And we're about to go. Shall we have the last messages? And remember to send the messages around, yeah? Remember to share the broadcast. Okay, Gibrin Musa says, Black Rasta, God bless you for your uh, good job, for the good job you're doing for Mama Africa. I'm really addicted to your tunes. All right, respect. Stephen Banda says, my king is live. Thanks, Black. The Larry says, bless up, Black. The Rasta, greetings from the United States. Keep the fire burning. Yes, nothing but the truth. Mm -hmm. Mark Hendricks says, big up Black Rasta. Big up yourself. All right. Jennifer, as you come money, says, as for me, any man that abuses animals can equally um, abuse humans too. That's it. It's true. In the UK, people go to jail for abusing animals. Recently, there was even an African player who slapped his cat. Do you remember? There was a Ghanaian who traveled to America. Was it England? And he saw these bears flying all over the place and he caught them and started making crack crack with them. He said, ah, and I'm free, Wahana. Who <laughs> prefer free chicken? Sharif Ibrahim says, does that mean we Muslims are wrong when we do? Hey, no, no, no. What sacrifice do you do? Don't go there, Sharif. I said, the prophet of Islam said, do not be, okay, maybe he just wants to know. He said, do not maltreat animals. How do you maltreat animals? An animal, can you beat it for free? Some people even castrate animals. friend is saying, I don't know, you know, you castrate it. That is wickedness. Some say they want to fatten the animal. So they crush the bones. Some people feed the animal with chemicals to make it boof. There are a lot I can tell you. You go to America, some countries, these so-called dairy people, dairy, those who make the milk from the cows and all, the chemicals they feed these animals with and the kind of food they give them is just for them to grow boof so they sell, not for the health of the animal. A lot of them are obese and depressed. That's what we are talking about. But if you are using it for food, I don't eat animals. But if you are using it for food, it's unto you. But remember there's cholesterol. Remember it will make you sick. Don't wait until you get stroke and the doctor tells you stop eating this. It is true. That's why the prophet of Islam said during Ramadan, if you can, cut down on your meat if you can't stop it. You know what meat does? It gives you sexual feelings. Sexual feeling. And during Ramadan, you don't need it. You need to. S In India, those people who don't eat meat, they call them weak or impotent because they don't eat meat. We can have a whole debate on this, but me, I won't look down on people who eat meat. I used to eat meat when I was a little child. I come from a Muslim family, it was all about meat. I won't look down on that. But I look down on people who maltreat animals and are cruel to animals. Lato, sir, I want. Don't be cruel to animals. My name is Black Rasta, Professor Albio Mens, a.k.a. Albino. I love you. Uh, Brother Kweku and everybody right here, your family, we love you and we appreciate you. Hey! Wayo! Wow. <laughs>